levels, this can give us an idea of how high and how we can measure our autophagy levels when we're doing fasting. Hey, what's up, fasters? It is Dr. Legrand here, here for another fasting video. And if you are new here and have not subscribed already, we talk all about fasting and other health tip videos and alter medicine. So if you want to know more, make sure to hit that subscribe button below, that red button right there, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any other future videos. All right, so let's dive right into the topic of today. Today I'm gonna to talk about how to measure autophagy. This is a very up in the air kind of topic. There is some research behind it, but it's a still a little bit of a gray area, so I'm gonna kind of set that precedence. But I'm gonna dive into the research of what they found to help measure autophagy, and at the end of the video, I'll discuss of how you can actually measure autophagy at home and not necessarily have to go into a lab and do some expensive lab testing. So go, let's go ahead and dive right in. With autophagy being on the rise of a very, you know, trending type of topic, especially as fasting is becoming a very popular thing, people are finding ways or trying to find ways to be able to unlock autophagy and what's the best methods, what's the best types of fasting strategies, and also more importantly, how do you know if you're in an autophagy state and how high your levels are when you're actually fasting? So this brings up the question of how does one measure autophagy? The reason why people want to measure autophagy is like, okay, am I going too far? Am I going too extensive? I have talked about this before in one of my videos and I'll leave a link right above here about how much is too much autophagy. But also more importantly, are you reaching the benefits while you're fasting? Have you even reached those autophagy levels and how significant, how far have you gone? In order to determine if there's certain types of methods that actually turn on autophagy, such as fasting, dry fasting, water fasting, intermittent fasting, or any other kind of methods that are out there as far as different teas that actually do induce autophagy, some type of measurement protocol would need to be put into play. Fortunately, researchers have actually found that there is actually particular specific proteins that do identify this process known as autophagy. One scientific publication actually identified 30 different proteins, so 30 different proteins that autophagy does have in this particular process. Now, the publication further explains that there is a particular protein, because there's 30 of them, but there's one in particular that holds a little bit more weight as far as measuring autophagy levels, and what they found is that LC32 proteins is one of the best ways of actually measuring autophagy levels in the human body. Now you know, I might be asking, what is LC32? What is it for? Well, LC32 is a type of protein that is utilized for the process of lysosome degradation and is incorporated in the autophagosomes, which is a big part in the process of autophagy. I have talked about what is the process of autophagy and I'll leave a link right above here. I explain all in detail of the process of autophagy and I talk about lysosome degradation, autophagosomes, all those fancy scientific words. I'm not gonna get into this video today, but that, check out that link if you have not seen that video already. Now different methods are used to actually measure these particular proteins as well as other compounds that are produced during this particular process. In one study, they found that electron microscopy was actually one of the more particular ways to best to measure this particular process because it provided an effective way of identifying cytoplasmic components in the human body. So you might be asking, what does that do? Well, in turn, what this helps identify when you're looking at this from a microscopic aspect is to be able to identify if there is autophagosome process going on in a particular person while you might be in an autophagy state. Now, just like with anything in science, it's never ever very perfect. And while this might provide some great benefit to finding whether you're in an autophagy state, there is still some drawbacks. It's still challenging to know exactly how, how high those levels are. Um, what, you know, a lot of these studies have kind of shown it isn't a perfect science but at least it's, we're getting there. We're getting there to be able to start kind of finding and measuring autophagy levels. 
In fact, another study that I was reading about is they found that more and more they're finding that there is definitely a lot of confusion around how to measure autophagy and what is very concrete at the moment. Or at least that are just acceptable as concrete science of how to measure autophagy. But the researchers do go more in depth about this study that autolysosomes and autophagosomes can be measured in volume to determine what state the autophagy is in our body. So there's definitely hope for of knowing how to measure autophagy levels. It's just like I said before, it is, there's a little bit of gray area, like I said at the very beginning of this video, that it still needs to work out some things. We still need to fine tune things, but we're certainly be able to measure volume and be able to kind of determine, yes, we're in an autophagy state. It's just determining how significant, how far our levels are. So we're still having to catch up with that. Now, while these methods might be a great way to be able to measure autophagy, there is drawbacks because there can be a stimulances in our body that can mess up as far as the increased levels, as far as what goes on with each individual. So they still have to work on that. But again, this is something that you could do in a lab, it just might be a little bit more expensive than you really want to do, and it's still being perfected. Now, for those who just don't want to go into a lab, especially spend the money to kind of measure those levels, there's things that you can do at home that you don't necessarily have to do of blood work to be able to find out if you're in the autophagy state, and also to kind of determine somewhat of maybe being of your measuring your autophagy levels, whether it's high or low. Studies have shown that ketone levels can actually be measured, but can also be used as signaling metabolites as a number of different factors in our body. And in this case, it actually could help us determine when your body is in a per se starvation state, unlike using that term, but basically when your body gets to a point where the glucose is running out and starts switching over into ketosis. But more importantly, we know at least somewhat that when you're in a ketosis state, we do know autophagy starts to elevate when our glucose levels start to plummet and our AMPK levels start to go up. When our AMPK levels start to go up, that is when autophagy does get activated and also deactivate mTOR, which remember mTOR is the signaling pathway for sensing nutrients. So we do know if we can measure ketones, we can measure glucose levels, this can give us an idea of how high and how we can measure our autophagy levels when we're doing fasting. So there's a simple formula to use this to be able to measure both your ketone levels and your glucose levels, both of which can simply be done at home. So what you're gonna do is get a glucose meter and there's also, I've seen where there is some things that can measure both ketones and glucose. You can get some of those meters. So the formula is simple as you're gonna take the measurement of your glucose levels divided by 18 and then you're gonna divide that by your ketone levels. And what this will provide is your glucose ketone index, which this can be used as a reference, a rough reference. It's not perfect, but at least it can give us an idea whether we're in ketosis. So anything that's below three after calculating this out usually means that the body's in ketosis. So really those are the kind of tips that I have as far as knowing how to measure your autophagy levels at home and also what the science and researchers have found to be able to measure autophagy. I know most people can't just go in a lab and go do that. That's still under a lot of research currently. But I hope this brought you guys value. You know, I try my best to try to find what I can with the research, what's out there. I don't wanna just give you just theories. I try to do the best I can to be able to find the research. Hope you guys appreciate that. Um, I'm curious what you guys think as far as how you think you can measure your autophagy levels, what you've done in the past, what you've seen. Maybe if you found some other research, I do appreciate it. And also the community appreciates it. Just put that in the comment section below, please. Uh, you know, we're all trying to figure this stuff out. Uh, we all want to know how we can basically benefit our autophagy levels, how to activate it, how to induce it and increase it. Now, as always, you know, uh, if you are new here, every Tuesday and Thursday, I do talk about fasting videos, uh, you know, at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Tuesdays and Thursdays, as well as other different health tips and alternative medicine practices. So if you're new here, you know, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, go ahead and check out our Autophagy playlist right here. And then I'll also put uh, the video here I talked about as far as 
when you reach too much autophagy, what when you need to stop. So I'll put that playlist, uh, that video right here. And in our next video, we're going to talk about how to kickstart autophagy. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.